In this tutorial, we are going to see how to use R to analyze a twin the power of two factorial design. In this course, we are using R since it is a widely used free software. Anyone can download and use it. However, feel free to use any statistical software you have available. All of them will give you exactly the same results. Before starting with R, let's take a look in the data file. I have used Microsoft Excel to type the data. For the analysis, we have to dispose all the data in rows, so each row contains the information on a specific run. As we have 12 runs, 2 in the power of 2 experimental conditions times 3 replicates, the table has 12 rows for the results plus a title row. To save it as the CSV file that will be read by R, just save as CSV. Go in File, Save As, Coma Separated Values. Let's now change to our studio. To start our analysis, we have to open a new script window to type the code. File, New File, Our Script. Now, we just have to paste the code from the TXT file. I have it already open in my computer. It's just copy and paste. In this analysis, we are going to follow the same steps we did in the manual solution. Analysis of variance, regression model, contour plot of the results, and check of model adequacy by the R squared and the residual analysis. Let's now load our data from the CSV file. To do it, select Files and choose your file. I have already the folder where I have the CSV file selected, but probably we will have to select the folder first, then click on Import Dataset. Here we have our dataset. The columns substrate and enzyme are the natural variables with the levels 15 and 25 for substrate and 1 and 2 grams per liter for the enzyme. The columns XS and XE are the coded variables with the levels minus 1 and plus 1 related to the natural variables. The column yield is the response. Each row represents an experimental run. Now that we have imported the data set, let's go back to our script window and check the data by using the str function. Let's run it. The data set has 12 observations of 5 variables, and all variables are numerical. To perform the analysis of variance, we need variables defined as factors, so we are going to create them. There are two options, transforming the existing ones from numerical to factors, or creating new ones as factors. We are doing the second option, as we need the natural and the coded variables as numerical to build the regression model. Thus, the next step is to create the factors for the analysis of variance. The factors factor S and factor B are being created as new variables or columns in our data file. I am using the coded variables XS and XE to attribute the levels, but we could use the natural variables also. So let's run it. In the data file, we can see now the new columns factor S and factor E. Now the new data structure shows seven variables with 12 observations, and the new variables factor S and factor E are defined as factors with two levels each. Now we are ready to do the analysis of variance, so let's go back to the script window. Let's assign to the object ANOVA the analysis of variance AOV, 
where we have the variable yield as a function of the factors S and E and the interaction between them. The data is in the data file substance yield. To visualize the results, we have also to run the code line summary. So let's run it. Now we have the ANOVA table. In the lines, we have factor S, factor E, the interaction between them, and the error. The columns shows the degrees of freedom, the sum of squares, the mean squares, the F value, that is the F0, and the P value. The results are exactly the same we calculated previously. Substrate and enzyme are significant, while the interaction is not. The next step is to run the regression model. We are going to run it for the coded and for the natural variables. For the coded variables, let's create an object named coded model using the function linear model LM to build the regression. In the linear model function, we are building a model for the yield as a function of xs and xe, the coded variables. Note that we didn't use the interaction, since it is not significant. We also need to point to the data, and to visualize the results, we need to run the summary function. Let's run everything. The result shows the table with the regression coefficients for the coded variables xs and xe, as well as the independent coefficient. We have the p-value for every one of them, showing their level of significance. And we have also the determination coefficient under the name of multiple r squared of 0 0.8772. The regression coefficients and the r squared are the same we have calculated by hand. In the same way, we can build the regression model for the natural variables. To do it, I am using the natural variable substrate and enzyme to build a linear model for the yield and assigning it to an object called natural model. Let's run. Now we have the coefficients for the natural model and they are the same we had calculated previously. We have also the p-values indicating their significance level, and the r-squared that has to be the same from the coded model. Finally, we can use the natural model to build the contour plot of the yield as a function of substrate and enzyme concentrations. To do it, we are going to use the response surface methodology package, RSM, and create a contour plot using the predicted results of the natural model with the substrate and enzyme concentrations. We have to use the library function to load the RSM package. Let's run it to visualize the contour plot. In the contour plot, we have the substrate and the enzyme concentration in the axis and the yield represented as contour lines in the color pattern. We have already discussed this plot previously, so we won't do it again. However, we still need to check the model adequacy by the R squared that we already have from the regressions and by the residuals plot. To build the residuals plot, we are going to use the plot function. The first argument is the horizontal axis, the variable yield from the data file substance yield. And the second argument is the vertical axis, the residuals from the natural model. We can use either the natural or the coded model. The results will be the same. In the second line, we have the axis titles, and I have also added a horizontal line at zero to help with the visualization. So let's run it. Here we have the residuals plot. As we have discussed previously, the residuals have a random distribution, 
and the R squared says that 87.7% of the total variability is explained by the model, so it is a good model. We could stop the analysis at this point, but I have a small piece of code now to build a table with the summary of the results from each condition, the mean, the standard deviation, and the number of observations. This information can be really helpful for presenting and discussing the data. We are going to load the dplyr package for data manipulation and create a table called dt, where we are going to group the information from the substance-ill file using the variable substrate and enzyme. We are going to create columns for the mean, for the standard deviation, and the number of observations. So let's run it. The resulting table has four rows for the four combinations of substrate and enzyme, and we have now the mean, the standard deviation, and the number of observations for each test condition. Finally, we can export this file as a CSV to work with the data elsewhere. In the next lessons, we are going to use R to analyze several experimental designs. You can easily adapt the codes to analyze your own experiments just by changing the variables and the file names. I hope you have enjoyed the tutorial and I see you in the next lesson.